Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another tutorial. I'm not going to give the tutorials numbers because <laughs> if you see any of my videos, whenever I put a number it's usually one in front or one behind that it should be, so uh, we'll just call them tutorials. Uh, this is the Wheat or Louisiana Tigers tutorial. Let's just see if we can get a bit closer. Uh, this is the best I'm going to get with lights at the moment guys, so you're just going to have to put up with it until the day when uh, I get some uh, some better lights. I mean, these are my painting lamps, but obviously they're not designed to be uh, video lamps. Um, and the video camera is right underneath uh, my main painting lamp, so it's blocking some of the light out of that. So, uh, unfortunately, we'll just have to go with what we've got at the moment. Um, going back to the figure, uh, first of all, it's a, while I'm thinking about it, it's a foundry. 20 well I'd say 25 well it's 28 millimeter but it's 25 from I've measured it from foot to eye and it's uh, uh, 25 mil so I'd say it's more like one of the older school ones and as I've said in the previous tutorial when I uh, announcement video um, I believe I've had this one since the 90s I might be wrong um, but I do believe it's from the 90s so uh, you know it's it's a it's a fairly old sculpt, but I, I, you know, I keep saying I think you agree. I think it's a fantastic sculpt. Uh, great facial details. Uh, I, I'm just not gonna. Don't think I'm gonna get any better with the. So I'm just trying to find a way we can get these lights any brighter. But unfortunately, I think that's as best as we're gonna get. So it's uh, as I say, foundry figure, um, 25 stroke 28 mil, whichever you want to call it. Uh, being a Louisiana stroke Wheats Tiger um, I'm going to be giving him the stripy trousers and like the there's my pointy stick uh, up the top here he's got like the, the, stock, uh, the socks or whatever that keep the you know keep the baggy trousers in um, and they're striped as well um, so he'll have a blue jacket uh, with a bit of red piping around them. I mean, the cuffs look as if they've got a, uh, a piping around them and a piping around the jacket edges where we can see it. And then obviously the, oh, I did used to know the name of this thing, but the, the, the waist sash anyway. Uh, this would be a generic one, I'd imagine, like most of the manufacturers. Obviously they try and hit all the bases. Uh, it's... Um, you know, it is what it it is what it is. I haven't seen loads. Um, I have seen lots of reenactors with the sash on and lots without. So um, you know, we'll go with that. Uh, I haven't. I have seen a few with the like the uh, Union Zouaves with the um, the the different Austrian knots. You know, the different uh, lace knots around the jacket. We're not going to be doing that on this one. I've seen enough evidence that uh, they haven't got them. It's not moulded on. That doesn't matter. I mean, we can have a go at, at, at painting those. But um, I, I think that the majority of ones I've seen are without the knot. So it's just plain lace around the cuffs and the the, the trim of the jacket. Uh, obviously, it's red cap. Now, later on, I know that the Tigers uh, did have that uh, brownie, I don't know what you call it, fawn, brown, whatever, uh, jacket instead of the blue um, and they had the the uh, I would have called them a Senate hat after the British Navy, but the you know the straw straw hats anyway. Um, they did have those a lot, and that's the only the only thing missing from that section that Foundry have got. I wish they'd have had a couple of the the straw hats as well because uh, the the Tigers seem to wear those a lot. Um, now I will say as well, a lot of these tutorial videos that I'll be doing over hopefully over the next couple of years. I'm not an expert, definitely not in the American Civil War. I've got a, an interest. I've got you know, several books on different uh, engagements and battles, campaigns, a lot of the naval stuff. Uh, but I don't know a lot about uh, Wheat's Tigers other than that I've read on uh, Wikipedia and that. So um, I'm not going to go into any great details of, of you know what, uh, what they were doing. Uh, I just know that uh, in case anybody doesn't know, uh, they, they, from what I've heard, they were mainly recruited from uh, the docks around New Orleans and obviously the waterfronts. 
Um, they were uh, a lot of them were, were immigrants, Irish, and and just about every immigrant under the sun uh, that was used for unloading ships. Uh, they had quite a fearsome uh, battle reputation, but they also had fight a fa <laughs> fairly fearsome reputation when behind the lines in uh, drinking a lot and smashing up the place and just general you know hooliganism. So uh, this guy's obviously. What, what what we'll say? What early doors in the war? You know, he's obviously got full full equipment. Uh, when everybody rushed off to war, with you know a, a load of pistols and and whatever. Uh, the only thing that's missing from this is uh, I don't know if it was a Bowie knife that they they actually wore, but they used they were whenever you see them they they were famed for having these these big long knives. Uh, and this guy hasn't obviously got one because he's a, he's a generic Zouave from both sides. So um, yeah. So guys, we're going to get on with the painting, so that's enough for uh, ramble on the figure itself. You'll notice the hand's detached. Uh, here is said hand clasping uh, rifled musket or smooth musket. I'm not sure which. Again, I don't know if, what they had, but there's the hand. Uh, I've just super glued it, uh, the piece that actually sits in the socket. It's a lovely, actually clean uh, fit. Um, how this, uh, this will stand up to that bit of super glue, I don't know. I'll probably end up knocking it off, but... Um, it's easy enough to carve that bit away uh, if the super glue is too much, you know, if it's too notchy when I uh, take the cocktail stick off. But I thought that was probably going to be the best way to to handle it. Uh, we're going to start with a base layer of flesh, which if you saw the other video, let's get this. At the moment, as I say, I'm, I'm shooting with my video camera on a stand that's really designed for uh, um, your phone, you know, to, to video from your phone. So uh, it tends to be a bit heavy and it, that means that the, the camera will move uh, very slightly as I'm painting and throw off, uh, throw off what you're watching from occasionally. So I apologize for that. As I say, it's an all an ad, ad hoc setup. I've been pushing back these tutorials because I'm not set up for it really, but I just thought, oh, they, you know, by the time I ever get round to having a full studio set up, you know, we could be another year down the track. So uh, we're going to go in with light brown anyway, uh, which they've got here as 70.929, but light brown. You'll find that this is one of my go-to flesh colours. Uh, and if you're wondering, I do the flesh. Uh, one, I don't know why, I just think it brings the, <laughs> brings the figure to life a bit more. Um, you know, it, it it just gives us something to work with uh, when you're doing the rest of the figure. But also, uh, I think it came from when I was doing my ABs, the eight, 15 stroke 18 millimeters. But I like to actually um, outline the the hands. Um, it just it just shows where the hands are in relation to to. And I know that sounds a bit silly, but when sometimes they're they're sculpted, you know, next to, like in this case, baggy trousers and things like that, and it just lets you know before you do the rest of your painting on your trousers and that exactly where the hands are. Uh, not so much the face, but and what I'm probably going to do as well is, uh, as I say, definitely with the trousers, I'll try and do a stripe <laughs> on the, the actual camera and I might well do the rest off camera and then show you it uh, but I'll show you how I approach doing stripes on a figure uh, we might need about 150 goes at this because I don't always get them right when I'm actually doing them <laughs> without a uh, camera looking over over the figure but uh, we shall see but yeah this just gives for me it just gives an outline of the Brings the, the little soldier to life a bit. Nice bit of flesh on him. I think once we've got the flesh base down, it usually takes two coats, but I'll normally put one on. The, the, the first one, as I say, is just an outline, and then I won't touch the other, the second coat until we get right at the end when I do my flesh. So. As I say, it's just to show me what the figure itself looks like. Sparks your interest, unless it's a really <laughs> badly sculpted figure. <laughs> and then you're thinking, oh, why am I painting this figure? 
but in this case um, it's a lovely job I believe obviously the the Perry brothers sculpted a lot for foundry I don't know if this is if they did this range but uh, it really is a nice a nice figure um, the only drawback I had with them was was um, when I looked at because I was intending to do a whole unit of these I didn't I couldn't even didn't even remember I'd got this figure uh, which is a shame really because I'd painted him ages ago um, but when I was looking at them over the last 18 months it's one of those setups where the figure packs don't always make you know you're spending a fair bit to make a unit up so and especially if you want to put a bit of variety in uh, I think the Zouave range has probably the best variety in all of their Civil War packs it's just as I say if you wanted to do Wheats Tigers uh, without doing some converting work and to be frank most of my my figures end up getting sold on um, so doing tons of conversion work yeah you get the UR effect and people are kind enough to say oh well done and whatever but uh, as a lot of my figures get sold on it, it comes down to time really how much time you spend on a figure that you won't get the money back on being the hard mercenary that I am that is the one problem when you bring your your hobby into being a job you have to be the mercenary, well not so much mercenary comes out of you but you've just obviously got to make a living so that's our uh, let's do a bit more under that hand there so just move him out of the way for a second while we have a have a go on this hand again the base coat as I explained in the last video uh, I do it to slightly probably slightly thicker than I, I would do any other coats I, I, I tend to because I I like to paint larger scale figures when I get the chance um, I do tend to use a, a thinner paint mix and maybe some of the some of the guys out there painting especially for just for their armies uh, but it's is the one time when when my paint mix is, is usually tends to be quite thicker just hopefully taking up any of the flaws it's not so much for speed it's just maybe taking up any little flaws that uh, are in the, the casting now I'm doing this as a longer video because it seems that most of you guys that's what you prefer um, as I say, I still, I still may um, cut away from. You know, I'll show you a bit and then do the jacket. I, you know, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes. Um, I've got a bit more to do. As I say, this is just really define what well, I suppose you could call it defining uh, work. Just um, seeing where we're going to be placing things. Right, let's put that little guy to one side. Right, I'll be back in a minute guys when we when we will I think start on the jacket yeah I think the jacket first I'd actually normally do I normally start the trousers first but uh, <laughs> I know coward you're, sh you're shying away from from doing the, the stripes on those all those creases probably um, but I just think getting the the jacket down uh, I believe we've got black straps all over this and a, a black leather um, backpack so uh, I think we're going to go with all that strapping and that getting in the way I think we'll go for the jacket first and we'll do that to completion uh, so we'll do all the all the black sorry all the blue um, and we'll do all the blue up to, up to the highlights leaving the red obviously because we're going to be doing roughly the same for the hat uh, although the hat I might well do the hat just very slightly uh, a different red shade to the to the lace. So join me a minute guys, I'll just fish some blue out and we'll get to work on that. 
All right, guys. Uh, thanks for rejoining me. Um, we're going to give this give this jacket its base coat. Uh, it's a this is actually a scale seventy five deep blue uh, with um, some black mixed in with it. Um, what I would suggest to you is uh, a lot of you guys won't have scale seventy five. Um, I just happen to like it. It doesn't cover. Um, it covers. It covers better in in multi layers, you know, for for blending and um, glazing and things like that. So, you know, a lot of you guys will probably be painting with um, with Vallejo, which, as you know, I've got a ton of as well. Uh, but I happen to love this this blue set that they do um, and because of that I think it's great for Napoleonic French uniforms and uh, great for I'm going to go paint straight oh, sorry we're just going to paint straight over this uh, where this um, bit of red uh, piping is going to be because I think it's just going to be too awkward so we'll give that coverage uh, what was I saying yeah um, it, it it covers it's 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 great for French Napoleon uniforms, uh, and great for you know things like uh, you know Union blue uniforms, anything dark blue really I suppose. Uh, it doesn't cover as well uh, in a couple of tr you know coats than say your um, Vallejo. So you you know. I wouldn't tell you to go rushing out and buying the blue pack starter pack. Um, you know, it's twenty plus pounds. Uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a magical. You know, any paint. You know, we all tend to rush out. You know, the next time they somebody says, "Oh, you know, I paint with these," you know, and everyone rushes out and buys them, or a new, if not a new paint, but a you know different types of paints. Uh, from a manufacturer brought out that's supposed to be all singing or dancing and again it is down to personal taste you know you you paint with what you think works best uh, my uh, may I suggest if you're not going to obviously you probably won't have scale 75 in any great quantity uh, your go-to paint would probably be Vallejo uh, dark Prussian blue uh, with um, with some black in um, and what we're trying to achieve here, because it's a, a fairly dark blue jacket, the reenactors I've seen it, it's, it seems to be very slightly lighter sometimes than maybe some of the Union jackets. But let's face it, we all know whatever time period manufacturers dies or change from you know from batch to batch. Um, but I think sometimes. One of the mistakes when you're learning, you know, learning the craft of painting figures is you over highlight them, you know, because you, you've got all these, you've got all these highlights, you know, uh, you know, the, the arms are all, all ruckled up, you know, you've got those deep crevices and whatever, and people tend, in my opinion, tend to over highlight, um, especially on. Well, again, I've seen it on big figures as well, but but especially obviously on war games figures, because yes, they have got to be seen from a a distance away, but at the same time, and I I remember doing some of the first figures when I got back were some Empress Zulu war figures, and I just painted a few of them, and I made a right pig's ear of them. I mean, they literally had electric blue highlights on those dark blue trousers. Uh, you know, it's easy. It's easy to do. You get carried away. Um, you know, and uh, you end up with this this bright blue, which uh, obviously was never there on the real uniform. Again, as we said on the last one, it's your figure. You paint them how you want to paint them. Uh, but I do prefer to keep the highlights fairly subtle on these these type of figures so we're going to go so we're working up from a really dark color so put your bit of black in your 
in your blue. Now bearing in mind, although I've said like dark Prussian blue, or in this case deep blue from, uh, from scale 75, your more or less any type of blue, you know, you're going to put black in it, it's going to get dark real quick, so you know, just play around with it. Small quantity. I, I normally go with two two thirds of the uh, the base colour, as in like dark, you know, uh, sorry, uh, say dark Prussian blue, and then put your third of black in there. Um, but again, practice around yourself, guys, and see what what works for you. I say none of these uniforms were. None of these uniforms came out of the suppliers all in the same shade and then once they hit the sun and you know washing and all the rest of it you uh, you soon get them to changing. Always make sure to dig in behind that, you know, it knocks your brush around a bit, but get digging digging low behind that back pack especially if you you're priming in a lighter color like I've done here again the uh, primer of choice on this one is my uh, automotive primer from Halfords in the UK obviously other countries you'll have your own um, and then it's just been brush primed in areas where I've missed with the spray, um, it's just been brush primed with a, a Vallejo uh, brush primer. Bear with me a second, guys. Want to dig in deep down here? I so say you can knock your brushes about. I'm pretty, I'm pretty hostile with my brushes. I mean, this is a blooming Windsor and Newton, and it's still slowly deteriorating over the last the last year. But I often, I've always used uh, army painter brushes for for years and years, and I just couldn't get a hold of any. And I ended up having to use my my Winsor and Newtons that I kept back for my larger scale figure painting. I will have to hunt around again. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what uh, well I couldn't get any before. I, I went, literally went from supplier to supplier, and they would, you know, they got them advertised as. As um, you know, the, the mixed packs and that, but you want particular, you want particular brushes. I find their insane details is a is a very nice brush to paint with. Um, it, the thing is that they change the lengths. One minute that's the small lengths, then they're long, and um, and obviously buying them offline, you don't get to pick them. Um, and so sometimes I was getting ones that that weren't particularly great for what you wanted to use them for, but they're still that they're really nice and thin. They're great for doing um, for doing uh, intricate details like piping. And I do apologise if you hear any background noise at the moment. Um, obviously, it's a uh, it's summertime here in the UK, and uh, I've had to actually shut these uh, in my studio. I've actually had to <laughs> shut the windows. So <laughs> we're suffering for our art here, people, at the moment. <laughs> it's yeah, you know, and I thought, and I've got a nice big fan behind me, but I thought, no, I can't put that on either. So uh, I think that's about it. So it's just going there slightly. Again, try and keep your painting as neat as you can. One, it teaches you to paint neat, but two. Say these um, these trousers, um, they're obviously going to have a white base to them. So to, to go over over the dark blue, um, it's uh, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Now I'm going to take a break for a second just to find out. Obviously he's got his shirt underneath and he's got his sash. And a load of you guys can be screaming out now what it, what colours they are, but I've forgotten already. So <laughs> give me a minute, guys. While I, uh, while I check that out. Right guys, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, just had a, a scan of the um, 
of the different uniforms of the Wheats Tigers, and there is a few variations. Um, I was starting to panic because when I was looking at some some of the first artwork and on photographs of reenactors and that, I didn't see any sashes, and I thought, oh great, here's me, and I've spent all this time wanting to do them as this particular unit, and there's too many differences for us to... Uh, See, this is the problem, the damn camera keeps, uh, the weight of the camera brings the, brings it down. Uh, yeah, there's too many differences for me to, to you know, really call it a, a tiger, but I have seen, delving a bit deeper, there are plenty of photographs came up, um, and as usual, all of them given their own different take on it by the look of it. Uh, I've got... Um, I've got tigers with uh, a few with blue. Uh, um, sorry, a few with uh, these uh, these sashes that are blue, and probably more showing red. So I'm going to paint the sash red. Uh, the actual thing that I originally went to look for, which was like the shirt underneath, I did think that was red, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, and it is so. It's red. So uh, all we're doing at the moment, I'm just giving the the jacket when you can see it, a second, uh, a second base coat uh, as I say even with black in scale 75 is uh, it doesn't cover, it's not massively forgiving for um, for coverage straight away and, you know if you want, if you were thinking of trying to do something in a first in a first pass you know and move on to another highlight or something um, you usually end up having to give things a couple of coats it doesn't help that although it's sunny outside and I've got the obviously the sun's coming in through the windows and things uh, I'm painting um, the, the camera's blocking a lot of my my painting lamp out so I'm painting a dark colour not always the easiest right right guys I'm going to put the hair the hair dryer on that and dry it out so uh, we can carry on working so bear with me a second I don't think you'll appreciate the noise so I'll be back in a moment right, it's nice and dry what would we do without those hair dryers um, We're now going to go on to the first highlight, which will be, in this case, uh, deep blue. Uh, if you're using Vallejo, uh, it will be dark Prussian blue, I would imagine, if you've put that as your base with some black in it. So let's get us into camera shot. When you're just like place, uh, you know, if, if, if you're really enjoying your painting obviously otherwise just slot the paint on that's obviously no problem uh, but if you want to do it almost like you're painting a large scale figure you want to be dragging first of all wipe as I've said on the last videos have a, a piece of either dry kitchen towel or damp kitchen towel and uh, wipe your your brush off, or not well, not wipe it off, but just just dab it on there or on your finger, which is what I normally do, uh, and that'll just take that that just little bit of excess paint off, um, and that will stop you having that telltale like pear or tear shaped uh, paint where you start putting your brush down, and then when obviously if you drag it along. Um, Now where you where your brush leaves that part of the figure is where the most of your paint's going to be deposited. Um, so what you want to be doing when you've got highlights like you know a ridge of cloth, you want to be painting from the darkest points or you know the, the wherever you wherever you want to leave your darkest shadow. So leave a small piece obviously for the shadow, and then drag your paintbrush up that ridge of cloth uh, because you will find that your your uh, your paint will be deposited um, on the top of that ridge. Uh, you know it'll be more dense there, 
Now this is more really for doing larger scale figures where you you know you're glazing and things like that, but it's just a nice habit to get into um, because it'll still have some effect on your on your war games figure. Of course, you can throw all that that information in the bin and just <laughs> just follow the follow the the contours. Um, it's just how I do it. I'll give you. A, I'll show you the paint on the nail again. This is the the, the, the type of uh, thickness of the paint we'll be looking looking for when we're doing these highlights. Right. So, bear with me a second. I'll move him out of the way, and I'll just quick you a give you a quick. Uh, Bear with me a second, I'm just putting two stripes on my nails so you get an idea of uh, right, this one's the base colour. Um yes it's obviously deposited at one end. I've not done a um you know, I'm not trying to paint the figure, but uh you can't really tell with my glorious light system, but that is a that is a lot more thinner paint um than the uh, than the other side. Uh, you want to be seeing your nail through it, if that makes any sense. Again, you know, if you're batch painting, you know, lots and lots of figures, you might not want to go down that road. It's just like get a, you know, get a, you, you know, put your thicker paint on and get it on. And um, this is just how I how I do things. So you're not going to see a great deal of difference at the moment, and in the highlights, obviously we've only got one thin coat on, and I would say, uh, because it's going to be dark, you're not going to see a ton of highlights on there. You know, we're not going to suddenly have an ultra bright. Um, so when you rejoin me, when I've changed batteries, uh, you will be joining me for the second highlight, and uh, that will, well, well, we'll cross that bridge in a minute. So yeah, catch me in a minute, guys. I'm just going to change batteries. Right guys, what's uh, been a blink of an eye for you has been probably about an hour and a half for me. As uh, as usually happens, you go to get your spare battery only to find that uh, that's almost dead as well. So we're now going to do the second highlight. Uh, for that I'm using uh, Scale 75 Navy Blue. So that's, uh, that's Scale 75 Navy Blue. Um, you could also use uh, Prussian blue mixed in with the dark Prussian blue because you're still trying to keep those highlights uh, fairly fairly contained, you know, not too over the top. If that makes sense. So again, we're going over the pulling from the lowest part to the highest part, which is where we want our paint depositing. Again, keep your, keep your brush moist, don't let it get, especially in obviously dry conditions wherever you are in the world, uh, you're only going to knack your brush up. Although this one hasn't got that much far to go on it, I must admit. This is getting annoying to say the least at the moment. As I say, this this camera stand, it's only one of the cheap, you know, cheap Chinese ones I've bought. Um, but unfortunately, the camera, which I, I thought it would probably would be, is just too heavy. And the actual clamp itself is made to hold a oh come on, get him. Bloody focus. Sorry guys. Um the clamp is, is is meant to hold a you know obviously a, a rectangle uh, mobile phone rather than a big clunky camera. But you've got to make do with what you've got. The main thing here is just to show the different painting styles and as I say that you know. 
it's not teaching anybody to suck eggs as we've said on on the last videos uh, it's more I think at the moment these you know until until I can get you know editing properly and lights properly and all the other things properly <laughs> uh, I, I just uh, think at the moment all we're trying to go for is um, a bit of entertainment really you guys if you can pick anything up that I'm doing great um, and it's just a bit of an accompaniment to you guys while you're painting Now, what you can do, obviously, on a maybe a larger scale figure, you'd be you'd be um, mixing. You wouldn't be necessarily going from one jump to the next jump. So, you know, uh, deep blue uh, to navy blue, you'd mix some in between, and then and then go up, you know, to the next stage. But here, we still because it's a war games figure, we're still trying to f show those highlights, even if they're in a more a more um, subdued type of look to them. Uh, the other highlight I want to do for the me I usually leave the final highlights over almost not not necessarily the whole uniform but definitely the jacket. And I said before even when I'm doing horses, I'll do the horse then the rider. I always do the riders already attached to the horses, um, but I will then do a very last highlight on the horses and usually on the things like the jackets. Um, when you can see where you know where things will need that little bit of a lift, you can hear vigorous shaking going on in the background, and that's uh, that's the one. I wouldn't say a drawback with scale seventy five, but they are whether it's the, the 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 matting agent that's used in there, but they're extremely uh, hard to to mix up if you haven't got any type of you know electric mixer or whatever, which a lot of us don't have, including myself. Um, so please give them a vigorous shake because you'll start using up all the, you know, the fluid agent, whatever, uh, and you'll be left with just the raw paint, which will go off fairly quick. And they're not cheap. Um, they're not cheap paints. So give them a damn good shake before you you do anything with them. There isn't a huge amount of blue on this figure, really. Uh, you know, obviously there's so many belts and that in the way, so we don't need to use too much a too much of a amount of paint up. Um, I think the next. Thing I'll, you know, well, I'll say that I'll probably lights, but it's all right having lights if you're not going to actually be able to get the camera to stay in one place. Thing is, it throws off my my, you know, getting the figure for you guys to see because I'm not I'm too busy concentrating on painting the figure, and I don't know the camera's been creeping down, and you suddenly realise you've been painting for five minutes and nobody's been able to see a thing. Uh, so I might have to invest in one of these big tripods I mean they're not again you get a you know one of those off eBay and you can pick them up fairly cheap but maybe one of those big tripods um, that shoot out you know you, you've got it going over your shoulder and it's actually designed for for like video use you can you can screw it into the little adapter plate so maybe that's the way to go the only thing is it's storing everything you know for a guy who just wants to paint that's the one problem you know um, I don't think people appreciate so much. I don't mean appreciate so much for get a round of applause, but just not just the investment, but just the the space needed, you know, for doing any type of tutorials that you see people do, you know, painting, modelling, whatever, you know. There's a there's a lot of logistics that can go into it. I mean, I I got that free free um, video editor, which I'm. Just, Still, I mean, this vi this video won't probably go through it. I'll probably just, you know, you guys have been happy with a long video you can paint along to or model along to, so there doesn't seem any really much point in in making, uh, you know, prattling around with a, a video editor at the moment when uh, this one's not needed. The problem is, as I say, I paint full time for a living, and, and just doing this will take more or less the whole working day up. Or night up, painting in the evenings as well. 
Um, so you, you really do have to a lot of the time do it to fire and forget, you know, just, just get it get get it done, get the video up there. Right, so again keep going out of focus while this camera's deciding to to do its own thing. Let me just see if I can move that farther. Problem is the move it, <laughs> the move, the more I move it one side, the, the closer I end up getting to the to the camera stand, which is awkward to paint with. Um, so we've got our highlights. Now the the that's Canterbrack blue. I don't even think I actually said the the paint I was too busy faffing around with the camera. So Canterbrick blue, I should say, from scale seventy five. Again, you could probably go with your uh, your um, Prussian blue from Vallejo. Uh, or any other blue that you might fancy, or even uh, deep sea blue uh, as a as a final highlight. And I do sometimes put deep sea blue on this one as well. Uh, I don't stick to one particular paint. If you know, if I've got to mix different paint manufacturers up, I've got no problem doing that. But for the moment, uh, we'll stick with that. I think we're going to go uh, with our reds now. Uh, before we go black, um, come on! He wants to he wants to show off the marks on the back of the back of the paper towel. I don't think we want to go brighter than that. That shows a bit of sun. It shows a bit of highlights, you know, a bit of sun bleach on it, and that. Um, I wouldn't suggest going any high, higher than that for your. Any type of dark blue, you know, whatever you're painting. Um, if you want to represent dark blue. Right, join me in a minute, guys. I'll just go and uh, sort my reds out. All right, guys. Uh, chosen the first couple of reds I want to use. And they're going to be from Andrea's red set. Uh, the first one being a base colour. And the next one being the first highlight colour. Uh, they do sh um, two shading colours as well. Uh, once we've once we've gone with the base, gone with the first highlight, we'll see we'll see where we are with the shading. Yeah, just remember, you don't have to you don't have to um, always put your sh you know you don't have to go dark up to light, which is usually the classic way of doing it. You know, don't worry about. Uh, you know, you can put your shading, your your shade, your deep shading in afterwards if that's where you know. Just 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 see where the where the colours work for you. If that makes sense. Right. So we've got our our vest. Now the the vest stroke jacket. I might make a bit pinky red. So I might be going to um, some uh, Vallejo colour. Once we've seen how this one looks, but it's the base colour anyway. The base, the base goes um, a very light. It's weird. It goes quite a light red when it dries. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna call this sash red as well. As I say, I've seen uh, reenactors with it, with blue ones on as well, and artwork with blue. So you know again. Pays your money, takes your choice, really. Now this this sash actually has like a, a board around the edge of it, which I take is for the Union Swaths where they have that. Uh, they do. I've seen some with a border round. Um, we're not going to use a border on this one. It's just going to be a, a plain red one. I mean, you could be go to town on it and you know file it out or whatever. But I'm happy just to paint it out. At the end of the day, it could just be a bit of reinforced stitching decoration that they've the suppliers put on it. So. I'm happy to go with that. I'm 
Try not to get the red everywhere. Debating whether that's going to be trouser, which I think will leave us trouser underneath. Underneath that sash. So we've got a hat that's also red. I think as well, if you've got the time, it's better to, it, when you, whenever you've got a lot of the same colour, but on different parts of a uniform, or if you're painting civilians, so in this case red, maybe give an attempt of uh, changing the the colour of the shirt, um, the you know the the hat and the trow uh, the hat and the sash, and I just think, yep, yeah, I've just <laughs> oh, classic when you're trying to, <laughs> I'll just put the uh, the brush into the first highlight. Oh well, it's not massively important. Get that out with a bit of base. Um, yeah, you know, uh, ch change your change your colours over. If you, it just gives that bit of a difference. It, it, it's it, it'll just lift your figures up from the average, if that makes sense. Um, again, I know that a lot of guys, you know, you do these tutorials more just to have some compliments of painting rather than to necessarily want to pick painting ideas up. But um, you know, if you've got the time, it can be a, it can be a bit handy just just changing those you know changing the look of the reds, maybe a darker hat and a lighter lighter shirt underneath you know or the that sash is lighter. Just something just something to make them look a bit different. And even if you've got the obviously if you've got your your paint already prearranged on your palette. Um, you can always say maybe lighter red shirts, darker hats, and then swap it on another figure round so you get that in the field look where maybe you know they they've been given uniforms from different suppliers or you know that type of look anyway. I keep saying it, but I'm really impressed with this figure. Actually, it's, uh, whether I'll be impressed with it when I've done the stripes on the trousers is another matter. But for now, uh, really enjoying it. Nice figure. Always, it always lifts you when you're when you're painting a, a figure you enjoy. You know what I mean? Rather than, I mean, as a commission painting, you you paint you paint what you you're told to paint type of thing or paid to paint. Um, but you know we've all painted figures that have been a right fight. You know, uh, you know you send off for them, and you think, even though you've done your research, when you actually get them in your hands, you think, oh my life, <laughs> it's you know it's sometimes hard to make them look good. I've got uh, I've got a few figures like that in my uh, my spares box. But it was funny when I actually came down to. You know, thinking what I was going to actually paint for tutorials. When I mooched around in them, there wasn't anything that I could. There's, there's a couple. There's a few. There's probably about two or three different manufacturers' figures I've got that they're in the box because when I got them, I started painting them for myself and just like nah, and I just don't have the, the heart to paint them for a tutorial. Uh, When I next, um, once I've done this, uh, in fact, actually, bear with me a second, guys. I'm going to, this camera angle just isn't working for me, so bear with me a minute and I'll see if I can change things around. <laughs> 